Hello everyone, my name is James Coleman and I'm the Maxwell Render Mentor at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology. The Centre for Design Technology staff and students provide courses, equipment, consultancy and research in product design at the University of Brighton. In this video what I'd like to look at is just the Maxwell Studio interface. Now by far the most common complaint I always get about Maxwell Studio is just the interface itself and how difficult it looks to use and ultimately I agree it does look really difficult um, especially to a first time user when you're exposed to this for the first time uh, it's really looks really complicated and it's especially complicated compared to the alternative at our university and I'm sure it's an alternative for a lot of users is um, photo view uh, which is now integrated into SolidWorks as of uh, 2012 so compared to photo view where you've literally just got your model and a few tabs around the place this looks really really complicated and the first thing I have to do with students is just to tell them and show them that it doesn't have to be like this uh, Maxwell Studio has an interface which you can customize and you can get rid of windows and put them where you want them and also have different layouts for different tasks and that's the first thing we always do and it's by far the most useful feature and you can always see their faces of oh right yeah okay I get it now so this is the um, layout as it starts up but I mean my one is this one that I always use and as you can see it's a lot it looks a lot cleaner and it's a lot easier to work with. But let me just um, go back to the default layout and explain why it is the way it is. Basically, um, Maxwell is showing you everything that you could want at the same time. For example, if um, if I go to materials here, it makes sure my default material is selected, and then if I click in this grey box at reflectance zero to choose the colour of this material, if I change it to green color or whatever and then I press this little icon here and it will show me what this material looks like. Now all of that was already still uh, visible but if I get rid of these windows, just click the X here and then double click the default material to bring it up again you can see the material editor pops up and it was closed but then it pops up and I can click on the little, it's now green to show me that it's green, click on that little button and the color picker pops up again change the color or whatever and refresh it to reflect it okay so those uh, windows are popping up whenever I need them and that's true regardless of where or uh, when they are so what I can do is I can just close them down with a little click and that's literally all you need to do to uh, get rid of the windows you don't need open all at once because if I do need those open they will automatically open what else I get rid of in the uh, interface are the other windows which I'm not going to use or it's not that I don't use them it's just that you don't commonly use them especially with day-to-day -day product visualization work so instances for example get rid of it I don't need it textures list I don't need it uh, and then down here materials I will need but history now nah, I don't usually use that and console no. and the last one to get rid of is material browser I don't often use Material Browser. I don't find it's uh, really necessary in my day-to-day uh, -day work. So this just leaves you with cameras up here, render options, camera parameters, which is tabbed in with render options down here, the viewport, objects, object parameters, and environment tabbed together, and materials. It also leaves you with this interactive preview. Now, interactive preview is probably the most important window, but by default it's floating. You can put it anywhere you like. And if I click this icon here, this attach button, you can see it actually uh, goes in and it tabs into the viewport. Now, this is okay if you are definitely working with one or the other, but vast majority of the time I want to be working with uh, both at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the interactive preview and click and hold up where it says interactive preview at the top and as I drag down you should see the other windows moving out of the way. So there they go, they're moving out of the way, they're sort of wiggling around and what that means is when I let go that the interactive preview will go wherever um, I'm holding it. And also what it will do is, if you click and drag 
and hold it over somewhere and it doesn't move out of the way, that doesn't mean it's going to float or whatever. But if you would un unselect it now, it will tab in. In other words, it will become tabbed with whatever window is floating over at the time. What I want to do is I actually will uh, leave it tabbed over with materials and then just move materials. I'm going to move materials again. Select, click and drag and then just move it over here. I'm going to move mine above object parameters. I need to wait until object parameters have moved out of the way otherwise it would tab in. Once it's moved out of the way I can de-click or deselect it, whatever, and it will go up there. And I'm going to move objects above that as well. Lovely. So now I've got objects, materials, object parameters and environment tabbed in with each other, camera parameters over here, cameras, render options, and then the viewport with the interactive preview. One more thing is that also um, if you want to detach any of the others to have them floating, you can easily do that with cameras example. Uh, I can move cameras wherever I like. And if you'll notice that as I'm moving it around, the other windows aren't moving out of the way. That means that if I deselect it, um, it won't dock anywhere. It won't attach to anything. And if I want to uh, attach it back so I can move it around, it will stay uh, wherever it's put. I can attach it there. And notice that it goes back to wherever you put it. If I was to move it over to here, for example, detach it, and then move it over there, and attach it. It's still going to go back to over where I left it, the last place I left it. So I'm going to put mine up there where it's normal. Okay, now you've actually got this layout, the next thing to do is to save it so you can access it again. And that's done with simply Window Save Layout. And click on that and just put it wherever you like it. It should actually come up with the default location, which is, uh, if you're on a Mac, it's uh, Hard Drive Applications, Maxwell, and Layouts. Um, if you're on a PC, it'll be you know similar C drive, uh, program files, and Xlimit, and Maxwell Studio layouts. Okay, I think that's everything. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. For more information about Maxwell Render training at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology, email maxwellrenderbrightoncdt at gmail.com.